I believe, I believe that the fastest way to kill creativity and human potential in any in any economy or in any community is to is to feed people freebies. Okay, all right. Just give them just just give them money. Throwing money at poverty doesn't cure poverty. Okay, I agree. and that is one of well, that's one of the things that people fail to understand. Now, had it been I did not have uh, a purpose or a vision, so to say, or, or or something that drives me. Now, the money, Mr. Bonang, assuming he gave that money directly to me, I think I would have just gone shopping. Okay. Now, I read a story a few days ago. There was a mistake. There was a mistake that happened. The, the government paid the money that was supposed to be paid to a particular company to help people that have lost their jobs due to COVID-19 was paid into one guy's account. All right. Right. This guy is a factory worker. I, I don't know if the, the story has been circulating online. But this is something that right. happened recently, just like last month. 6.9 million into one person's account. By mistake. 6.1 million. 6.9 million, something around that. Okay. So this guy moved from 12 rand. To he, when the money came into his account, what was his balance was 12 rand. So he moved from 12 rand to 6.9 million overnight. Right. The first thing he went to do, buy a car, all right, which ended up exposing where the money was because they posted it on social media. I like, I and like then your they, were able to trace, <laughs> they, they were able to trace and all of that. He went for a car, number one. He, they went for a tombstone, one of the most expensive tombstones to bury their dead. You know how Africans are with tombstones and all of that. So that is how the money was spent. And he, he gave uh, three million to his girlfriend. He transferred three million to his girlfriend, uh, transferred, I uh, think, another two or two million or so, one million to his brother. So he shared the money within the family. All right. By the time the, the, the Hawks finally discovered where the money was, they were right. only left with, they were left with, I think they said less than 100,000 in, in his account. When they discover right. the money, that's so they are still trying to find out where where is this money? What happened to this money? These people went shopping, shopping spree. Now you would think that money cures poverty, but it doesn't. Now someone, someone with a purpose, who is driven by a purpose, when that kind of money lands into their account, the first thing that is coming to their mind is not a car. Believe you me, <laughs> it's not to go and buy yeah. a car. So. They're thinking food, they're thinking tombstone, they're thinking cars. That is the mindset of poverty, okay? Because you, for people that are think that are that that their mindset has not evolved and they are not thinking purpose, they're thinking money. When money comes to them, for me, it actually aggravates their poverty. True. Because in less in less than than a month. This guy moved from 6.9 million back to less than 100,000 in just a few months. <laughs> Not even actually a man. I think this thing happened in like three weeks. So he went back to his poverty. Whether he was discovered or not, he was going to go back to his poverty eventually, even though he was a millionaire in, in overnight. He had within, no idea what to do with it. For a so few this days. is like a recent story. If you can check it online after we finish, you'll find what I'm talking about. So this is like the I'm most recent story, story yeah. that, that shocked me. I was like, how do you? What did he do with the money? Okay, we know about the car, we know about the tombstone. Where did the rest of the money go to? Nobody right. knows. But that is the right. mindset of poverty. And you would True. think that the government keeps throwing money at people, talking, calling it grants, and, and taking people out of poverty. No, that is the way to pass poverty from one generation to another. Do you agree. want to really save people? Teach them how to catch the fish. That's teach it. them to be innovative build innovation hubs you know the pandemic is happening and i see that the government is more concerned with feeding people i mean can we have a better plan other than just feeding ourselves can we have a better plan other than just not going to bed hungry can the government start thinking of building innovation hubs in these townships and giving internet access to these people so that they can learn to hunt their own bread online this is how i think all right because no matter how much the government feed these people Post the pandemic, they're still going to be the same. But if the government gives them something, which is access to the internet, this kind of infrastructure, they will be able to find their own bread online. They will be right. able to hunt their own bread online. I am not South African. I have never had access to government grants. I have two kids. I'm a single mom, but I survived. Now, it's South African because they've grown with that mindset. Okay, the government is going to give me 300 or so 400 as every month for my kids. They cannot imagine how they can survive without that the fact that i don't have access 
to these grants and to this money, it's, a, it's an advantage for me. But someone who does not have a creative mindset sees it as a disadvantage. They call it, I am from a disadvantaged family or from a disadvantaged background. I call right. it, I am, that for me, what you call disadvantage for you is my biggest advantage because that is what drives me. The fact that I look at my kids in the morning and I know no government grant is coming, if they're going to eat breakfast in the morning, it's on to you, Nikki, to make something happen. That is what right. drives me. But for someone waiting on the government, they're not going to think outside the box. They're not going to think creative. They're not going to think innovation. They're not going to think, what can I do? You know? So, yeah. and that is the way I say money doesn't cure poverty. 